can you substitute methyl cellulose in plant-based meat? Methyl cellulose is responsible for the binding, the chew, and the juiciness of plant-based meat. Now, I use methyl cellulose quite often, and, and I get called out for it a lot. And one of the number one questions on this channel is, what can I substitute for methyl cellulose? So I wanted to find out and see if there is a decent methyl cellulose, a decent burger binder out there that you could use that's readily available. Now, two years ago, I made a video where I used leftover citrus pulp to create a binder, and that worked out pretty well. And that was actually based on an ingredient that I found online called Citrify. Citrify is a commercial ingredient, and it's not really readily available for consumers. Uh, so that's where this test comes in. What is readily available at most like grocery stores or health food stores that most people can buy just about anywhere that will bind burgers almost as good as methyl cellulose. Now I've got a ton of comments online and everybody says that psyllium husk, chia seeds, or flax seeds is going to be a great burger binder. So I wanted to give those a test. One of the properties that methyl cellulose has that makes it better than pretty much anything else is the fact that it has thermal gelling properties, meaning that it will firm up when you heat it. I wanted to see if any of these had that thermal gelling property similar to methyl cellulose. So we just mixed a basic mixture of water and the test ingredient. We're going to let these rest for about 30 minutes to hydrate up. Once they're rested, we're going to throw them on some heat and you could see how they gel up. Now, after 30 minutes of resting, you can see that methyl cellulose firms into kind of like a hard gel where chia seed and flax seed have not firmed whatsoever. Now, I know chia, if you give it overnight, it will form a nice gel, but we're not trying to wait overnight to make some burgers. The psyllium husk, you could see it forms an incredibly stretchy, kind of like gummy sort of gel. So at this point in the test, I'm feeling pretty good about psyllium husk. Now, I keep showing this clip because after a few moments of throwing methyl cellulose on the heat, the water turns into, it's kind of like a stretchy, slightly gummy, but more chewy texture. It's almost like that of, of how fat is. It really replicates fat really well. Where everything else, the chia seed did nothing, the flax seed did nothing, the psyllium husk did end up firming slightly. It did, we lost some water, but it just ended up retaining that gummy texture. Now, I still have hope that it's gonna work as like a binder, uh, but I do not think it's gonna actually replace methyl cellulose 100%. So now the next test is to throw it with some textured protein and see how well it actually binds. Now we're going to skip the chia and the flaxseed because we know that those have no thermal gelling properties. They're not going to really bind that well. So we're going to do one test with methyl cellulose, psyllium husk, and then I'm going to do a psyllium husk with a little bit of arrowroot starch. I believe the firming of the arrowroot starch is going to give the gumminess of the psyllium husk more of a bite and a denser texture, closer that resembles meat. But we're going to see. Now we're just making some basic patties for this test. It's just going to be the textured protein, the binder, mung bean protein, uh, which is going to help with like the bite and chew. Uh, and then flavoring is going to be very basic, just some nutritional yeast and mushroom seasoning just to kind of give it um, some flavor a little bit more than just the protein flavor. Now I'm just mixing these all up equally. They're all going to have the equal amount of ingredients, equal ratios, equal water. And then we're just going to let these rest for 30 minutes. I want all of the starches, the psyllium husk and the methyl cellulose to be able to hydrate up really well before we continue with the test. So once they hydrated up, I made a single patty from each individual mixture. So I will say at this point, you can really tell the difference between the methyl cellulose and psyllium psyllium husk and psyllium husk arrowroot starch patties uh, because the methyl cellulose patty actually has more of like a meat feel and the psyllium starch mixture actually have a little bit of a bounce to them. It's kind of unique. I then use the induction cooktop to bring the pan up to 280 degrees. That's the nice thing about the induction cooktop is you can actually cook by temperature. I heated the pan up, added one tablespoon of olive oil prior to cooking each patty, six minutes per side. Now I wanted to test each one individually as they came off the pan so that way I can try them hot. So here's the first test with methyl cellulose. Now you can see I am giving this a press. I wish I had like a weight meter so I can feel how hard the force is I'm pressing on this, but it's staying together. It's juicy. It's super juicy. Let me give this a cut and you can see it cuts very similar to meat. You're going to end up with a meaty bite. Mm. There's a distinct chew and bounce to this burger. One of the main parts, let me finish chewing. Now, one of the main parts about that chew is, is really how everything's kind of just held together. We have a very firm burger that's staying firm, that you can pull on, that has some elasticity to it, and feels like a real burger. Let's try out the burger that's just the psyllium husk and see how it reacts to heat as well. Hey gang, I wanna to talk to you about something that's pretty close to me and today's sponsor. During hard times, it can get really difficult if you don't have someone to talk to. And being alone with your thoughts can be a really isolating feeling that can allow negativity to consume you. And that's why I'm sponsored by BetterHelp and a paying customer for the last two years. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. So I've recently been dealing with a 
lot of negativity with the comments here and across social media. It hasn't been fun. People could say some pretty awful things online and you can only read that stuff so many times before you allow it to sink in. My therapist Natalie and I have been talking about this a lot and we're still working through it, but she has me focusing on the kind comments and focusing on that has, has really made a big difference in my life. I'm starting to enjoy this again. The negativity was really getting to me. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and then you get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule secure video and phone sessions, plus you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential. And you can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. So gang, join me and the two million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. So many people are using BetterHelp that they're currently recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash saucedash. The link's in the description below. Thanks BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video and for just being there for me. So the psyllium husk still has a nice bounce to it when it's cooking. It doesn't have that elasticity to where it like actually bounces back as much as methyl cellulose does. It also browned a little bit different, which I thought was kind of interesting. Now I also did like a tong test to see if I could pick up the burgers using a tong without them falling apart. And every one of those passed that test. Yeah. There's not, I mean, it's still pretty squishy. It's holding the burger together for sure, but it's still squishy, kind of squishing apart. I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of meaty consistency to this. Uh, I'm a little nervous. Mm -mm. Well, okay. So it's weak. There is like a meaty chew to it. If this was in a burger, like in a bun, it might squish apart. It holds better than most other of like the burger binders that I've that I've used. There's not, I mean, you can pull, you can see, there's some elastability to it. There's almost like a stretch to it, which that's weird for a vegan burger. I mean, you can see the stretch. Yeah, that's odd. It has some unique properties to it that I really need to explore more because I think it could be usable in some situations. Now I'm excited to try out the psyllium husk and arrowroot. Now these two combined together should create the chew stretch bounce that we have with meat, but I, I'm still not 100% sure, so we'll see. Now I will say the one thing about this one, with that starch, it browned quite a bit different than the rest of them. And I'm kind of excited about the way this one browned. And again, you can see it passed the tong pickup test quite nicely. It actually did a little bit better than the other one. Okay, again, psyllium husks hold up. I mean, it seems like it works, but it's still soft. You can see the burger is still kind of squishy. But I'll say like the way this cooked and the, it, it does hold up, it does, it does have like a nice firmness to it. Just cutting into it, you can see it squishes and there is a little bit of that elasticity that we saw in the other burger, which is unique. That doesn't happen with burgers. There was a decent mouthfeel there. I'll be honest. I still think something needs to be added along with the psyllium husk to just give us that slightly better mouth feel. So I'm gonna whip up another mixture of the TVP mixture and this time we're gonna do all of the same ingredients except I'm gonna add some chickpea flour. Now chickpea flour has a very similar density to a gluten-based flour except there's no gluten so there's no binding element to it. So in theory, this should give us that bounce chew the density and have a very similar mouthfeel to methyl cellulose bound burgers. Now, after this hydrated up, we just did the same thing. We made a quarter pound burger. Now, now I just wanted to stop here though and say that this version came out dense. So that is giving me a little bit of hope that uh, when this cooks, it's actually gonna firm up and still have that like bounce and chew. Now this cooked very similar to the other versions, except it does feel a little bit more like methyl cellulose with like the way that the burger's holding together. It has a lot more elastability to where it's actually kind of like bouncing back. Um, I have a lot of high hopes for this one. Just like all the other versions, it passed the tong test with flying colors. This cooked significantly different than just the psyllium husk and starch alone. Uh, we still have that crisp, you know, on the outside, which is okay. Um, there is still some of the bounce, but the bounce is actually quite a bit more elastic than than the previous versions. Now the cut reminds me a lot more similar to how the methyl cellulose version worked. Let's see about the chew. Mm. So there's still a soft chew to it. Still a little bit of like squishiness. It does have a little bit more of a bounce and it does have a little bit more density to it. And has a little bit more of that semblance of realism. Now I will say that there's a, a specific mouthfeel that happens with the psyllium husk that doesn't exist with the methyl cellulose. Methyl cellulose is gonna give you like a juicier mouthfeel where this has more of like a gummier mouthfeel. Adding any sort of like fat mixture or like cornstarch fat mixture with these would really help with the, with the texture, the mouthfeel of like the juiciness of it. 
I'm gonna give this version with the chickpea flour a pass because the chickpea flour does make this denser. It does give it more of a meaty chew and meaty bite. I, I think this would work. Am I saying that this is a 100% replacement for methyl cellulose? Nope, not at all. This replacement here is going to come pretty close. So this is what I'm gonna recommend from this point on in. This is gonna be a decent replacement. Let me know what you think. Do you have any other ideas? What do you think is going to replace methyl cellulose? Because I know that's what you're all looking for.